Welcome to Trading Lounge and the US indices. We'll look at the S&P and the NASDAQ in Elliott Wave and trading level terms. And with the S&P here on the daily chart, we have this as a uh, uh, correctional count that's still in play in terms of wave three here, an A wave, an A and a B, and five waves up for a C, C wave of B. And we're calling that in as the top there. And then we're looking for a move down. Of course, it would be very helpful if the 2800 here, the 800 became the retested resistance, and it would also set up a short trade under this uh, bar here as well. Um, so we've got this particular bullish count, and we've also got a bearish count coming into play here. Um, if we make a new high here, then um, we can uh, refer to our bullish count that we have. So once again, we're working with this particular number here. So this is where our trade will come from, um, being long or short um, at this point. So of course, it's always good to have the closest, largest number as support or resistance, depending on which direction you're going. So um, above this direction, above the level here, would be looking for long trades. And below this level, we'd be looking for short trades. It's good to be on the right side at the right time. And that simply means finding the closest, largest number and being on the right side of that particular number. So, um, yeah, so this is the um, the bearish count. And we can zoom in and have a look at that in different uh, time frames. Uh, the bullish structure that we have for this is this particular count uh, here. Um, and we'll come in and have a closer look at this uh, here as well. So just going back to the um, the bearish count here, the just on the four hour chart. So calling the top in here. And uh, in this instance uh, here, let's go in and, and understand this. But at the same time now, if this low here is breached, then that creates the short trade. So just bear that in mind. Um, just go to the hourly chart here okay so just on the hourly chart here looking at uh, from this top here looking at uh, this as wave one and wave two here wave three and four and five here so we're looking at this as a five wave structure so we can call it wave one or even wave a and then we're looking for an ABC correctional pattern that would take us back to the standard, I have to take it from this low here, from this particular structure. So the 50 and the 60% retracement level is here and the NASDAQ is pretty much the same as well. So in this space here, we're looking for um, that retracement now. This particular move down through here, um, I'm going to call it a B wave here. And if I bring over the cash market for a second, you'll see that the move down through here on the cash market is in three waves. So it makes it a nice, it's not five waves down here. This is the high over this one. So it makes it, um, makes it an A and a B and a C. In fact, this little one in here is quite interesting because this is this, this little pattern here is the same as this bigger pattern that we're looking at here, where this low here is breached by a B wave and this low B wave here is breached this low here. So this is kind of what we're looking at. This move up here would be this move here. So we're looking at this going up into the 61.8% retracement level. So this would be an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave up here on the cash market. So we can say that this is wave one here and wave two here, and then all of this is wave three and wave four here. So wave five is still a little bit short, so it can go a little bit higher. So we need to talk about a strategy there. Even if it's a bullish market, then we still need a strategy, and the strategy would be to have this as one and two and three and four, and then five a little bit higher. And then it would create that high and after five waves we get a correction don't we an a and a b and a c wave so then that high there becomes our reference point for long trade so let's talk about that particular strategy so um so we know that we've got five waves moving up through here i think there's a little bit more to go just as i mentioned then so once we do get that in here get that high in 
because after five waves here, then we're going to see this roll back over. Now this is the 50-60% retracement level here. So it could just have, um, if I can take some liberty here, as an A and a B and a C wave down to here. And it may, wave two doesn't have to come down to the 50-60% retracement level. It may be shorter than that. Um, so, but then um, up through here. So what we want to do is we want to wait for this top to be come into play. We know that trends in every degree have a beginning, a middle and an ending process. So we're in the ending process of this here. So we need to allow it to finish and then roll over. And if it's going to be bullish, well, then we don't have to worry about it because we can just take that high here. If we get three, if you've got a keen eye and a good count, if you get three waves down to the 61.8% retracement level, three waves at the at the 50 at 28.10, if it's three waves, then you can pretty much go in and buy at that stage. But if you get five waves to the 61.8%, then it's going to go back up in three waves to around this level here, and then it's gonna go down again. So it's important that you can figure, if you're going to buy here, then you've got to figure out if it's three waves, ABC, or five waves to that point. That will help discern what's going to occur. But at the end of the day, this five wave structure impulse wave is wave C here. If for whatever reasons that I've got this wrong here, and this is an A wave and a B wave and a C wave in some way, and it could be in terms of one and two and three and four and five, a bit dodgy on that count, but um, squashing it in and making it fit, it's not the real thing to do. But, um, you know, if that becomes wave one and then back for wave two and then moves up, we need to be long from there. The other point that I want to make here too is that this is 2830. So 30, number three, is a group one. So it's the top of group one of 2800 here. So it's really important as 10, 20, 30, 1, 2, 3. Um, so in this case here, the market traded above the level here, but never came back and tested it. And when it did test it, it, it didn't hold. Right, it could have dropped down to the down to the twenty or the one point five at the max, and and then got back up and sat here, but it didn't. So it never really gave us that long trade. So what we're doing now is that we're bringing this down here, and we'll bring it down to this high. You might have brought it down to this high and gone long here, but that's okay. I mean, um, you probably get trapped in here, but. Um, because this has moved up here, now you need we need to be a little bit mindful. In fact, when we look at the the um, the Nasdaq in a minute, its B wave here never came down to to this point here. It stayed above. It came down to the sixty one point eight percent of wave A and then moved up. So. Um, and we'll look at that in a moment. But just want to sort of draw strategy in, in into this particular point here. Um, so just uh, just going in here, let's go to the tick chart here. That's not going to be very helpful. So I'll just have a look at the five minute chart to see if that's going to be helpful. Yeah, look, I just think there's a little bit more to, to the upside for this. I'm just sort of thinking about the short trade, really. <clears throat> um, so for the short trade, it's this number here that I really want to be looking at here. Um, so we know that this is group one here at 30, and then the next level down is 20. Normally when the 20 becomes the retested resistance, then it'll be, then it's basically going to be brought down to um, this, this is the main level here. So if two becomes the retested resistance here, then you can look to short it at that point. But I think to give it a little bit of movement to the upside, so, What we're looking for here is some sort of some sort of move a little bit higher here. So um, uh, and then then it'll be like this. So then that will be the long trades here. Once that first high of the level comes in, um, and on the short side here, this needs to work down lower here and then 
once you've got that reference point in, then you can short there. Of course, you could short up here, but I don't know how far this is going to drift up through uh, here. Um, on the cash market, it appears that this is one and two here, and then this is the third wave and the fourth wave here. So I don't know how long the fifth wave is going to go here. Um, and really the sort of the power has really been in the first wave and the third wave has been quite quite dominant as as well but it's shrinking a little bit um if i have a look at the this is just the nasdaq here this is the futures market but we can see how that's been moving up here um nicely but then we can see how the the volume has been diminishing each as this is moving up here it's actually moving up on um well just hot air really because it's not being driven up by volume the volume's been decreasing so you've got divergence in the volume to the price action here so um there's not a lot of there's not a lot of buyers in this particular uh, instance here for this this is just the one hour chart chart on the nasdaq on the futures market with the volume there so um yeah this will have a little bit higher to go here but once that top comes in then you can um roll over from that point yeah, once that high comes in on the hourly chart here comes in, then you can look for that. Okay, so for the NASDAQ, we've been more bullish on the NASDAQ, haven't we? You know, because it's gone up so high here um, above, you know, above these structures here. But we're also I'm calling it wave one. And this would be this April low here. This would be, you know, when you when you have a look at um, some of the Asian markets like India, um, it's April low here. Um, has created a bullish market and gone way above these highs here so in a bullish trend so it, it you know these markets can be in a bullish trend as well so um, but in this case here we're still looking for even if we call this wave one and two here um, and then three and four and five here as as wave one that's possible the other way to count this too of course which we haven't talked about for a while was actually having this as wave uh, E here actually if I can just configure that as wave E here which would make if I copy this here this would make this move this to wave D here and then um, then it would make this here if I copy this it would make this wave one here this wave two here right and then it would make this little move here wave one and this move here wave two as well so up for one back for two here and then moving moving higher from that point so that count is valid uh as well and we've talked about that before um so um but we don't have um uh, we don't have uh, any evidence to, to to go long just yet on on that when we move in here on the start with the four hour chart what we've been looking at uh, here for the moment so this could be wave one here if I just borrow this over here copy this here or wave one here not that it matters at this point but the top here still gives us wave one and two and three and four and five here and then we've got uh, here, if I just copy these here, the ABC pattern here, which we'll be able to see on smaller time frames. But we might as well put that in. So we're looking at the A wave, the B wave pulled back to the 61.8% um, at the 72, and uh, then wave C for wave B here and which is at the 61.8 percent mark here um, there's a couple of things here that, you know having a rally to the 61.8 percent mark is kind of the standard sort of issue but really a market can um, as a wave B or wave 2 it can come back you know 20 25 percent and then right up to well technically up to you know 99 percent but normally what we'd find is we normally look to the closest largest number as a reference point. So that would be 7,400. And then we would also look over here. And normally I just sort of, you look obviously look to tops and bottoms and those sort of things. But um, if you take a closer look you can, in the previous area here where you see all the opens and closes that actually 
um, see how they all line up in here and line up in here. So that just tells me that the market's been pegged there by volume from buyers and sellers and there's been a lot of um, action. So there'll be, you know, if we looked at volume on a histogram coming in from the side, we would see that the 74 would have the resistance there. So once again, the move up here, we're counting five waves up here. And once again, we'll be looking for the ending um, of that there. It has, um, it is acting like a third wave personality being so strong, but then we'd have to sort of consider, well, the S&P 500 made a low below this one here. So then it's not the same, not the same count. So we need to stay with this count for a while until proven otherwise. Um, just drilling in here, where are we? Four hours to the one hour here. So um, we moved up for the A wave, back for the B wave at the 61.8% mark here and at the 72 and then pushing up through here. So uh, that's the... 61.8% mark here, but I just want to move that into the 74. That would make that a bit more logical at that particular point. And the, and, and as I mentioned before, you know, on, on the hourly chart here for the NASDAQ, this move up here is moving up on diminishing volume. If it was moving up on increasing volume, then that would be a different story. So we're getting divergence within this space here with that. So um, just going onto the tick chart here. So this is not 100 ticks, but this is uh, 300 ticks. It just gives me a little bit more definition. So in this case here, we've got wave one and two to here. And then the third wave is one and two and three and four and five in, in this space here. So this is the third wave, this is the fourth wave. So we're looking for five waves to, to move up a little bit higher. And as I mentioned, the 74 here um, would leave us in, in about the right place here, even though it's above the 61.8% mark. And in this case here, we would see the one, two, three, four, five. So um, here we'd be looking at the, I have to draw on this side. So um, we can see wave one to there, wave two would come back, wave three would take us up into the 74. This would be to here, that would be, so we're looking for five waves like that and then we're looking for downside here. So one of the things is, is once that top comes into play there, that will become the reference point. So the arrival, the reaction, the first high above the level, the classic trading levels pattern are here, and that would give the signal to go along. So any movement up above that would, would need to go along at that point, but otherwise we need to look short. And you could tuck in here on this first one here and go short from here. It's higher risk, so you wouldn't shovel as much um, dosh into that one, um, but a small position and then looking to, to build into it as if it fades out um, and fades down from that point there. All right, um, yeah, well look, basically that's the um, the the, uh, the the price action and the strategies that, that we can uh, take. Okay, cheers.